the Bible. Is it hard to understand? When it comes to reading the Bible, the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that this is the Word of God. The seals have been broken, and the truth is here. And when we go throughout the scriptures, when we go throughout extra biblical records, we find that the language that God employed, that he used to create the heavens and the earth, was the Hebrew language. Christ said, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But yet no one, no religious leader, no religious church out there anywhere can now identify the 12 tribes of Israel. Can we? God is quite simple, but it seems as if man makes understanding him hard. What are those mysteries? The truth of your book. And the truth will make you free. The Hebrew and Bible Academy, you're invited. Hebrew and Bible Academy, you are invited. Shalom, brothers and sisters. I'm Elder Rikar Shiar of the Gathering of Christ Church here live with our weekly Patreon update. Okay, I'm not going to be here long at all. I always say that, right? But there is some important information to dive into that I would like to discuss over Zoom now, since Blog Talk been giving us issues for over a week, right? Over a week, almost two weeks. So let's see here. They say it's double audio. Let's see. Let me get, yeah, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. All right, one second. Let me see if I can fix this. All right. All right. Let's see here. I don't know what's going on. I know what to do. I know what to do. Don't worry about it. All right, let's try this. Let's try this. Is this a little better here for you all? Right? I'm going to just try the regular shore mic, you know, <laughs> the broadcast mic. Usually this works perfectly. Is this okay for you all now? Yes? All right. Yes? All right, that's better. Okay. Shalom, brothers and sisters. I'm Elder Rikosh Yar, the Gathering of Christ Church, here with our weekly Patreon update. And thank you, Elder Dell, for giving me the cue th uh, that states that all things are a go. It's all a go. That's right. I'm Elder Rikosh of the Gathering of Christ Church for the last time. And we're here live with your weekly Patreon update. Okay. And of course, I can't emphasize enough the importance of enrolling in our Hebrew and Bible Academy, folks. This academy is going to be off the chains. Speaking of being off the chains, getting off the chains, actually, I would like to sh say a, a, a humble shout out to the young men for Christ who's on our GOCC media every Thursday, well, every Friday, 17 hours ago, the brothers the young brothers, the young princes of Israel, they had a uh, discussion in the world, but not of the world, showing, showing brothers and sisters throughout the four corners of the earth that the young men are ready to take the reins. The young men are in position, and I think that they've been there for a long while, a long while, ready to take the reins, but unfortunately, you know, it's 
wrangling the reins away from those who, do, who want to seize or keep power within our community, okay? I believe one of the greatest drawbacks, not that our men have been perfect, but one of our greater, greater um, drawbacks within our society compared to every other society in the world is that it seems like there's a competition or a struggle for power within the black community itself, and it's utterly ridiculous, okay? Circular arguments, right? Right? Be submissive. Uh, well, he's not strong enough for me to be, to be feminine. These circular arguments that lead to nothing with this competition. And it's good to see brothers saying, well, this is what the Most High is saying, right? This is what God intend for us to do. And you can get on board or not get on board. It's okay either way. But this is what the Most High says. So getting outside of the what? The circular arguments that lead to nowhere only to bring resolution or solution under the Most High before judgment comes, right? And that's really what it's all about, right? So yeah, men are actually stepping up now. And I thank the Most High for the first time in my life on an international scale or even a, a national scale. Men are, out, men are actually saying, stating, telling, the, telling women what they want. No more silent scenarios, holding your tongue, you know, uh, uh, only to vent you know, in certain spaces like a barbershop for the first, <laughs> for the first time in the history of my life, I'm hearing men publicly state what our standards are. And guess what? It's been a long time coming because this is what stepping up looks like. It first starts with a conversation on requirement, right? So yeah, in this academy, Oh, yeah, we're going to try to get uh, some some people in the academy. We're going to have a roundtable discussion and a Zoom discussion, and we'll have some controversial uh, controversial YouTubers on either side in our roundtable discussion. The Bible, myself, Elder Lawyer, biblical families, but we'll also have YouTube personalities with strong followings giving their insight to where the earth is going. Uh, and why our people cannot get it together. The argument on either side. So I believe that's going to be one for the ages, and I believe you would want to be a part of that when we have that discussion, okay? And that's January the 7th. Thank you, Elder Dell. Now, before I go in, before I go in and, and uh, only to transition to Patreon, right? Shout out to the young men for Christ, GOCC Media. They, they brought it last night on GOCC Media. So if you're not familiar with GOCC Media, go to uh, GOCC Media online and uh, subscribe and hit the notifications. Some serious conversations that, that are happening amongst the young men, knowing that a storm is here. Not a storm is coming. These brothers knew or know, based on prophecy and geopolitically what's going on in the earth, that what? You got it. You got it. Let me pull it up here. That reconciling the issues called Willie Lynch has reached its peak. It's over. And I'm going to show y'all what I'm talking about. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about before transitioning. And, and brothers and sisters on Zoom, I want y'all to come in on Zoom once I transition over to Patreon. What do I mean? What am I talking about? Well, the prophecy is here. 
the prophecy that would lead to total chaos within the communities, which is stated within the books of Isaiah, the third chapter and the fourth chapter, where it states there will be a lack of men in the earth. Right. And if you notice. The last four or five years, even moving right after Barack Obama, there have been a push from the quote unquote liberal side. Right. To push strong woman independent woman, feminine woman, gay rights, trans rights, right? On top of that, people of color rights, everything except nuclear family has been pushed for almost a decade now, tilting our community towards the negative, right? Because all of this stuff is really aimed towards destroying the poor, right? Because, of course, it, it affects everyone to some degree. It leaks out. But there's certain societies who have insulated themselves financially and otherwise from the destruction that comes with liberal engineering. Liberal engineering. Now, where does this come in bad for us? Our people. Well, they did a harsh trick on our people, specifically a harsh trick on our sisters. They really pressed on our sisters, right? And I'm going to show you how they've done it, right? And by default, it affects everyone, right? Like, let me get straight to the point. You see what's going on with T.D. Jakes, right? I didn't make it a big deal because... Why? Brothers who are about anything, who are about nuclear family, believing in God and the Bible, knew that the church was lost a long time ago to those who were dealing in that type of activity. That's why you cannot find men there. Now, why are men like that, T.D. Jakes, over the church? Well, if they can empower the woman, knowing that the woman control the finances in our community in particular, being living under a matriarchy, then, then if, if the women are controlling the money, then you have to now make a doctrine that cater to their emotions to keep the money flowing in. And men with, with any ilk understood that. And we said, well, hold up, y'all not dealing with the principles of God. Y'all more so pandering up in here in these churches. And on top of that, you're not following God's law. And it was soft, soft situations like that growing within the church. Now, that wasn't that bad, and that's bad enough. It wouldn't have been that bad if what? Listen to me clearly. If you begin to not bring forth the judgment according to the law, when it comes to sin, what happens? The men leave, right? And then... The women in the church are bringing in young boys who are witnessing a softer nature, contrary to the strong men in the Bible. Now, that benefits those like T.D. Jakes and others who are, you know, allegedly dealing with certain types of uncomely activity. Because now that leads the church that leaves the church with what? Stronger women than the young boys who become soft. And that in of, in of itself opened up a whole pool of, of I'm going to tell you, of young men who now those people who are dealing with uncomely sexual activity, it gives them a larger pool to choose from now. And now the church become a breeding ground for that particular community. You see what I'm saying? I'm trying to speak as guarded as I can. But this is how you create a culture that will lead to more numbers within the letters. So men, we understood that a long time ago. And for a long time, women didn't want to break free from the Christian church. So real men left the church. Right? So sisters wondering, I'm going to the church to find a good man. And it seemed like all these men 
right, that I'm witnessing ha have no leadership skills, right? These men are soft. Therefore, I have to take the reign. Right? But, but guess what? There's a lot of good men. But those good men became silent and just moved themselves and allow the reckoning to come into fruition. Because at every time, every point where a man tried to gain power, there was resistance within their own community. So it was what? It was, you know, it was futile. It, brothers and sisters, it came to a point where if a man tried to get some get right in his home, automatically he was deemed an abuser. You can't even straighten out your home. You can't even raise your, your voice up in your home unless you are what? Verbally abusive. So really what they did within our community through social engineering was tame the lion. Tame the lion so that they can allow the community to run wild. And that's where we are right now. But now, as you can see, A reckoning is here. 2025 social attack is coming. This attack is more damning than actual, an actual physical attack. It's, it's, let me tell you, folks, it's more damning than Hiroshima and Nakasami, Nakasaki atomic bomb. And they'll need no physical weapon at all. What do I mean by that, folks? You can recover from a nuclear hit. Hiroshima and Nagasaki proved that. As long as you have family values in place, you could rebuild. So they learned a long time ago, an atomic bomb doesn't do anything more so than allow the government to come in to build infrastructure right the way they would like it to be built. That would put that country in debt. Japan was able to recover because what? They had traditional values in place. So they learned a long time ago, folks, a nuclear bomb doesn't really destroy a, I would say, a people in of itself. Okay, or a country. You know what destroys a people? Social engineering. Social engineering can do more destructive work against a society than any, than any bomb could, any atom bomb they could have dreamt up. And I'm going to show y'all something. So a reckoning is here. What do I mean by 2025 social attack? You know what they did? This is what they did, and we're going to talk about it on the other side. And folks, everything I'm talking about here is Bible prophecy. Is Bible prophecy. Let me show you this. Right. No soon as the elections ended, this controversial election with so-called Joe Biden. Something started to happen as if they as if it was planned. What happened? An influx of what would what, what were labeled at one time illegal immigrants under the label of asylum seekers begin to filter all within the United States. Now, they have done stuff like this before. They did this in the UK. They did this to Jamaica, right? So, you say, so I know some of you are asking, excuse me, you're probably asking, Elder Ricard, you've spoken about this before. What's so different? What can you bring in that's so different than what you've expressed before in lieu of what we're talking about. Well, the social engineering. Well, check this out, brothers and sisters. A record high, 12,600, they call them asylum seekers. There's nothing, the governors, and there's nothing that the mayors can do about this. I'm gonna show you why. Record high 12,600 illegal migrants or asylum seekers break into America in one day 
while government officials snooze away. That was December 26, 2023, right? That's 2023. Let's see what happened during so-called Christmas. Let's see what happened during so-called Christmas. Right? So-called Christmas Day revealed another migrant caravan marching toward America as the invasion continues, right? Right up under our noses. All of these thousands upon thousands of people coming into the country, right? So what did you mean, Elder, uh, Elder Rikosha? What did it mean with, with men, women not being able to get on one accord and that now they are moving the paradigm? There's a paradigm shift against the poor aimed towards destroying one demographic. Let me, let me bear this out for you. Look at this and look at this well, okay? Let me show you something. This is what we're going to be talking about on the other side. Right. Let me pull it up here. We're going to be talking about this on the other side. Let me pull it up. Hold on. One other thing. Let me grab this for y'all. Bear with me. One second. Bear with me. And thank you all. Welcome to our Patreon update. I'll be transitioning to my loyal Patreonies in a moment. Just hold tight. Uh, but let me wrap this up in a bow for the brothers and sisters right now. Let's see here. Let me show you all something here. New York Post. New York Post, right? <clears throat> New York Post. Shocking. And this was as of September 21st, 2023. Okay, this was the number before our current numbers that we see today. Uh, it's not including some of the numbers I've just shown. New York Post as of September. 3.8 million migrants have entered into U.S. since Biden took office. And that, that was as of September. They call them migrants, folks. At one point, they were called illegal immigrants because these aren't going through the normal process. 1.5 million sneaked in and are still here. And that was as of September. So what does this mean? 2025 social attack coming. What were they setting our people up for socially? More damaging than the atom bomb. Let me show you. They already had it planned, folks. The Democrats is playing on one side and the Republicans on the other. Okay. It's a numbers game. And what do you mean by that, a numbers game, Elder Rikashiar? Well, if millions and millions are coming into the country, at the same time, the demographic of our people are dying after believing whatever that was out there, right? You're looking at a socially engineered replacement, right? Now, what does that mean? A number game. Well, let me show you. Let me show you. Here's the numbers. The majority of the people that are coming into the country right now, right, are from a patriarchal society where automatically the women follow the men and know not to cross the line when it comes to that line between femininity and masculinity. Right. So the majority of the people don't know what feminism is and how erosive that is in their society because they're family oriented first. 
So a mind shift is coming into a country that's stronger than the mind when it comes to family within the United States. And that's, and that's regardless of your race, whether or not you black, white, whatever the case might be. Right. So already a stronger foundation has been socially engineered to come into the country when it comes to family. Right. Now, let me show you this. Let me get straight to it. Right. Straight to it. And we're going to be talking about this on the other side. Project 2025. So they already knew they was bringing all these people in who would be more so family oriented, right? So while everyone is looking at what's going on on a regular basis, arguing madness, folks, I'm looking into the long-term prophetic scenarios within the United States and throughout the world to show you that I believe all of these things, since the earth shut down altogether, I believe all of that was a part of the social engineering we're seeing right now with them coming with the solution by 2025. I believe all of these things were already in place. They just had to get the world to go to go along with it, right? Project 2025 Presidential Transition Project. What is a what is a uh, Project 25 Presidential Transition Project? Well. Building now for a what? Listen, for a conservative victory through policy, personal, and personnel and training. So what are they talking about, Elder Rikashiar, in lieu of the migrants coming here? And by 2025, there is a new project. What is Project 2025? What is this? Now, keep in mind, now listen to what they have done to destroy our communities as far as integrity goes, right? Well, I don't have time to go through these numbers. I'm going to go on through these numbers on Patreon in a couple of seconds with my Patreonies. But let me show you under blackdemographic.com. The current state of our society. Keep in mind, folks, I'm showing households and responsibilities of black women because we are ran in our community under a matriarchy where the woman leads, an unheard of phenomenon throughout the earth. Okay, so what does this mean? Society have engineered in our community a social acceptance for a defeated people where they would promote the woman and always promote the woman knowing the negative long-term effects of it without any of us men or the women in the community pushing back at it at its destruction at at its i would say destructive paradigm Okay, that leads to total destruction and evil. It, it, it leads to total erosion of a community. You cannot run any society led by women without that society doing what? You, you got it. It would cease to exist. And I'm going to show you the scriptures on that in a moment. It shows right here. You got black women here. And all women here in the United States, right? Household headed by women, 27%. 12% by any other people, right? Y'all see that? That first line. So other nations know that you can't have households led by women because it isn't sustainable. You don't have structure. You don't have discipline. Okay. You don't have guidance. Okay. Now, let's go to the next line. Gave birth while married. 37% in our community. 66% of all other people gave 
you know, they gave birth by choosing marriage first, which is biblical. Okay. Now here's the part that's going to crush everything when they put these policies in place. Living below the poverty line. That means whatever destructive policy that, that's in place, it affects the poor more so than anyone else because you don't have enough money to get yourself out of your current circumstance, right? Who live below the poverty level. All other women, 14%, and our sisters, Judite sisters in America, 24% of our women live below the poverty line. Right? So what this does, well, they, eventually that put more children in the system. Right? CPS and others. Now, if you put more children in the system, that leads to more abuse within the system. And usually, and what the, the unspoken conversation that, 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 that isn't being had is how many of those children begin to lead, lead a life of criminality, drugs, and or they become a part of a growing demographic, which is the letter people. So this, is, this, isn't, benefic this isn't beneficial for us growing traditionally to oppose, you understand, the social engineering, right? This benefits those who want to deal with certain lifestyles, targeting our community that would lead to more abuse, more mental illness, and others, right? Now, follow what I'm about to show you. Let's go now back to building. Why did I put 2025 social attack coming? What is this social attack, Elder Rikashiar? Building now for a conservative victory through policy, personnel, and training. It's about to get crazy. And guess what people you can point to? When, <laughs> when the other shoe drop, 2025 and beyond. People with the mentality like these women here. Cocktails with the queens. Remember I told y'all this. Remember I told y'all this. Brothers stood up, got lawyers together in everything. Ice Cube didn't get all that paperwork together. He hired lawyers and professionals to get to actually... Uh, submit to both administrations the pro that's right folks the project for black America he's like listen y'all shouldn't get our votes until y'all talking about until y'all talking about doing something for us men at the helm and getting our systems together getting our society together plan for black America we don't want to hear about your, 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 your black or brown people we don't want to hear about your LBGT and all that. That's your business. What about our people and our families? And out of nowhere, these women stood up in defiance of their own men and said, listen, the black woman's needs is a specific need separate from their men. This has never been heard of in the history of the world where the woman of a particular people publicly and politically separate themselves from their own fathers. Now, I'm going to tell you, when this happened, brothers and sisters, men everywhere, not just black men, eyebrows raised up high, one eyebrow raised up and say, oh, so you think you're better than us. 
You claim you want a man to lead. Now men are stepping up, shape, shaping legislation that can get our people out of hell only for you to come on and say what a black man does isn't good enough. After Ice Cube got attacked for him actually making a proclamation through tweets and all that, showing that he know he's Israel. Now I'm going to show you something. What is Project 2025 now? And I'm sorry, Patreonies, but I got to show our people on YouTube this before we have the conversation on Zoom, okay? Check out Project 2025. This is what the next administration, and guess what? That next administration is coming, is planning. What is Project 2025? Are single mothers the new government target? I'm from outer space, I got it. Project 2025 doesn't just demonize single mothers. It wants to change policies to punish single moms and perhaps even remove children from single parent households. Don't take my word for it. Let me show you. Their top priority is promise number one, restoring the family as the centerpiece of American life. And they specifically call out unmarried mothers as a reason that the American family is in crisis. Hundred pages later, when you get to their section on now, brothers and sisters, keep in mind it was the same people promoting single motherhood only to shape legislation against it later. Check out how they do their social engineering. It was them pushing the separate family in the United States, knowing it would affect disproportionately our people. Now the same legislators who kept men out of the homes, right? Who incentivized women to attack men and made it where a man would have to run to try to build his life any other place, knowing that the government would take the money through using the woman. Only to shift the paradigm and folks i'm telling you this is where it's going this is social engineering at its best listen to me make the relationship so unattainable to where men and women hate each other to now bring the death blow on the one side they've been pandering to for the longest after they know now men are fed up Hey, folks, you think they're not looking online and, and, and looking, at, looking at which way the wind is blowing? They know men, they know that what they shape for men in the United States and the Western world is unattainable and that men would eventually check out. So now that there's no refuge or protection for the women and children that they have separated from the man, now they're coming with the death blow. Listen to this. Four hundred pages later, when you get to their section on the Department of Health and Human Services, you see that they want to rewrite what the definition of a family is to be comprised of a married mother and father and their children, saying that currently Health and Human Services is too focused on LGBTQ plus equity and subsidizing single motherhood, and saying that these policies should be repealed and replaced by policies that support the formation of stable married nuclear families. It's not So what they're going to shape now is... Folks, Russia have had this law before. And it, and it helped build the military force and all that within Russia. That's right, folks. Switzerland had this law before. Because they understand that if you don't prioritize the man, then there's no one to help defend the country. So they started doing what? They started funding and subsidizing marriages. That you'll be benefited, not like they did in our community where they'll benefit one side if there's no man. Russia and other countries started paying extra money to families who, get, who got married. They did it in Switzerland because they understand that what? If you don't focus on the man, there's no one to defend the country. 
and they realized their country was becoming too soft. Now, guess who's looking to implement that? Folks, now, now that there's really what? Less roles for military enrollment since the history of America. So what they're pointing to is the feminism and that's right. The financial pandering under feminism to women have made the whole country weak. So now they have to shape legislation like these other countries did. I'm going to show you where it's going. Not enough to be uh, heterosexual, by the way, because they also call out homes with non-related boyfriends as being. So in the paperwork, in the drafting, folks, of this, as being, let, 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 me, let me go back here. With non-related boyfriends. Non-related boyfriends. That means you got a friend. Project 2025. They're not going for it. Just casually dating and having a friend. Nah, they're not going to be going for that anymore. They, they're going to call that what? A form of abuse on the children, bringing strangers around children. Friends as being one of the most dangerous places for a child. And they don't much like surrogacy either. In the context of emerging reproductive technologies, Health and Human Services should never place the desire of adults over the right of a child to be raised by the biological fathers and mothers who conceived them. So they're more so promoting the biological mother and father over the family with the new project that's coming. Here's a horrifying paragraph. The Secretary of Health and Human Services anti-discrimination policy statements should never conflate sex with gender identity or sexual orientation. So no more sexual identity within the schools. They're going to be pushing for that. Rather, the secretary should proudly state that men and women are biological realities. That Going back to the norm or the traditional. The traditional. Uh, 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 scenarios when it comes to identity, man, woman, nuclear family, children. That are crucial to the advancement of life sciences and medical care and that married men and women are the ideal. They're going back to and the married men and women are ideal or the country will cease to exist. Folks, they're claiming that this is a national crisis, an emergency if they don't get the family back together. Natural family structure because all children have a right to be raised by the men and women who conceived them. They also want to promote reunification as a part of child support. So instead of child support, which incentivize a person to just go around and just have children knowing they're getting money, nah, they're going to now make a law where it's about you trying to work it out with the man you loved enough to bring forth a child with, right? Right, wrong, going different, folks. This is what's in the law. Which is terrifying for domestic violence survivors. And they want to institute a healthy marriage and relationship education program uh, in every state level high school in America. With and they want to teach family in the curriculum. Curriculum on healthy marriages. Oh, I wasn't kidding about child support either. Child support in the United States should strengthen marriage as the norm, restore broken homes, and encourage unmarried couples to commit to marriage. There's also a line in here that basically says that if you're the parent of a transgender child, that that is child abuse. And they're going to say if you are the parent of, of whatever, you know, outside of traditional families are, I'm being careful here that that's going to be a form of child abuse under this new law that's being drafted by 2025. And if everything I've read hasn't sounded too bad, you haven't been reading between the lines, and this line here should clear it up. 
but the pro-family promises expressed in this book and central to the next conservative president's agenda must go much further than the traditional narrow definition of family issues. Every threat to family stability must be confronted. Every threat to family stability must be confronted. That's what they're saying. This is the greatest threat they're claiming to America since its inception, the destruction of the family. Are they wrong? Even though some could claim they had a hand in doing this, right? The Hegelian dialectic. You create the problem, right? Only to see the reaction to come with a solution. See? So they knew by breaking one side, a resolve would be needed as an as attention from the government right if you can't get people to actually join your army with the men so frustrated with <laughs> think about the state of men in america right now when it comes to not being able to have a relationship with these crazy standards with all the money going out of the window giving it to women and all these others only to blame the man for not having anything after it's all done what man living in that country would like to spill their life's blood on what? On foreign soil or even on domestic soil to defend that country? <laughs> so think about it. Who's going to fight for a country that's against the men who died for it? So they say, we got, we got to fix this quick. Because men aren't what? aren't signing up for the military. So they're saying, hold up, let's, especially black men. You, you send a black man up into somewhere, he coming back. He's coming back with the spoils, right? So look at this now. This resolve should color each of our policies and any family that's not a... Uh, heterosexual marriage. Now, this woman who seems to be a white liberal woman seems disturbed with this news. She, she acts as if, as if someone died with news that they're looking to restore the nuclear family. And it's women like this who are dangerous in our society because some of our women like, that's right, the cocktails with queens and a lot of them don't have a king, right? Talking about cocktails with queens. They take cues from women like this. And guess what? This isn't going to affect this woman like this, this white woman. Because when it all is said and done, this white woman eventually is going to go lockstep with her man once the paradigm changes. She's going to act like she never said this. Married family. That's a threat to them. Now, I'm going to show y'all, Elder. I'm, I'm going to show y'all, brothers. I'm going to show y'all why this is so deep for our people in particular. I want y'all to see this. Look at this, folks. I don't know if y'all know this law exists. I need y'all to look at this. There's a new law that they're going to draft and bring back into play. And they're going to institute this in certain cities, right? Right? Look, look at this here. A new Georgia law will allow DNA testing on paternity before child support cases reach court. Now, they started moving with this around 2015. It came back on, it came, it, it was back on the docket in 2019 before the pandemic came into play. So where are they going? Why are they going to now move this back into play? Why? This is why. Social services are about to change the dynamics of government support. Government support will have requirements 
based on what's in this project 2025 to make sure a woman qualifies. And that starts with what? That start, that start with her, her moral decisions. Okay? When it comes to how, what she was thinking with her body to make a family. The requirements that have never existed in our society for anybody, black, whites, or whatever, is, will now be, that's right, folks. Remember when they said that um, when, in the 70s when they claimed that a man, if a man was found in the home, you couldn't get uh, social services, you couldn't get welfare? Well, suppose they switch that around and say, well, we cannot support that home unless it's a married couple. That's where they're going with it. And then on top of that, they're looking into a plan where if they can show one or two cases. I, listen, I pulled this up and was reading this this morning, folks. They, they can show one or two cases where the police was called to your house for a domestic situation and you have children in the home and you're single, that they're going to deem that home unfit. And that's right. DHS can now come in and now make rulings on those children within single homes. If there were prior phone calls logged where the police had to come to the home for a domestic dispute. Now, now, check this out, folks. This is where it gets really interesting. The people that are coming over the border who are used to a patri uh, used to a patriarchal structure, man, woman, children. Well, they are part of the black and brown people that the Democrats have been telling us our people should be aligned with. So when it comes to all those social programs with these migrants coming in who was once deemed illegal immigrants. Well, they're going to already qualify for the housing. They're going to already qualify for the Section 8, the subsidies, because they're coming in as married couples under the black and brown label. So when they apply for welfare, they'll automatically get it. See, when they apply for housing, they'll get the housings because they are already under a family structure. This was their plan to make what a society of single parents only to demonize it. Knowing the destruction, the destructive community that comes from that, they'll be able to look at the community and say, listen, there's people, there's, there's women killing their babies now and leaving their babies out and around. There's criminality. There's people, these people aren't working. They, they're, all this negative stuff so that they can now come with this law 2025 to replace our people. This was their plan. See, but they have one plan, but guess what? There should be a plan for those who understand, who understood, who understand that this was coming. Okay, everyone knew that the way our society was going, that it was unsustainable. We all knew this. We knew that uh, something was going to come where they would have to shape something legislation wise to fix it as part of the, the final regenification. So what they did was they started promoting school. They started promoting debt and all these things, knowing that. The majority of our people, the majority of our women are struggling. See, so this is what they did. They brought in the replacements. And now all of the subsidies, whether it be child support, whether it be all of these things going to come with the requirement of marriage. Child support, the requirement of child support is going to be whether or not you're, well, you're willing to reconcile with your father in the plan. And a lot of y'all are saying, well, hold up now. Well, we just won't vote for the other side. 
folks, look around. Look at what has happened in the country for the last five, last four years. Who in their right mind is going to go for Democrats now? They did that intentional so that it'll be no other choice but the hammer. And it goes right back, folks. It goes right back to being stubborn. It goes right back to right before the last election, being stubborn, not willing. These women were public (laughs) saying, well, listen, we're better than our men. Listen, we need something for us. Not willing to get behind men. The men knew all this was coming. And now there's no one to to help our people. I'm going to tell you, folks. I'm going to tell you, I'm looking at these laws. I'm going to go there later. 3.8 3.8 million migrants have entered U.S. since Biden took office. 1.5 million sneaked in and still are here. And guess what, folks? <laughs> I'm going to show you this, too. I'm going to go into this. Folks, all of these people are coming in. who are already family oriented. They made relationships so unattainable in our community that men have checked out. So what's going to happen? You hear about this uprise of passport bros and all that. That's not going to be. The government's been hearing that, too, because guess what? I looked at the numbers. There's more of our sisters than there are brothers. And in all demographics that are coming into the country, be it from Colombia, Brazil, be it from Venezuela. There's more of the women than the men that are coming in. So the men who are fed up in the country aren't going to fly and go passports. They're influxing. They, they're inundating the country with women who are used to being raised under a patriarchal traditional family. And they know that it's going to lead to even our men, which I don't believe is right. But our young men is going to say, listen, all these crazy standards, I'm going to go get one of these women over here. Who've been raised to respect her father. And this is a direct attack that's coming on our women. I'm going to tell you this right now. So it's time for us to stand together. It's time for us to stand together. It's no time for men to hold up their head and say, well, listen, we told you so, so you're on your own. Nah, it's not. Nah, that ain't going to happen either. But women are going to have to come and humble themselves and say, you know what? You know what? They bamboozled me. They tricked us. Okay. They blew our head up. They made us believe we were better than our men. No, we need our men. And one thing about brothers, our brothers are loving and they are forgiven. Very forgiven men. This is why a lot of other races of people want our men. Because their men are hard. Their, a lot of their men are unforgiven. Okay, I'm going to tell you. It's going to it's going to. A humbling, a humbling spirit going to have to come on our women and say, you know what? I don't care what TikTok is saying, social media is saying. You know what? I love my, I love my man. Listen, I know I made mistakes, but I don't care. I can't fend off what's coming. They're going to cut off my housing. They're going to cut off my financing. I could at least humble myself under a man according to the universal law that's directly from heaven. I'm willing to humble myself. Right. But then it goes into Isaiah, the third chapter, where it tell you a man is going to be rare. It's a war breaking out. OK. It's a war. This is this is a social war. This is more dangerous than an atomic bomb, folks. What's coming? Because this is actually 
socially engineering our people out of existence in the inner cities. No one's seen it happening like this. Everyone was looking at a nuclear bomb. This is more dangerous than a nuclear bomb. This is genetically moving a people out of position and replacing them with others. That's where we're going now. And this, ain't, this is not about we told you so and all these others. The most High is allowing all of this to happen so that we can eventually, as a people, humble ourselves. And all this, I don't need something. We need to get that out of the way. Everyone on this earth needs something. This stuff talking about I don't need a man or I don't need this and I don't need that. Everybody, there's, there's not a, one person on earth that don't need something. And the Bible states pride coming before destruction and a hearty spirit before fall. Now, there's things that I want to bring out that I can't bring out here. I just can't. OK, I didn't want to take too much time. But I want to lead. I want to leave with this scripture here. I want to leave with this one. In Isaiah, the third chapter. So it doesn't matter how we feel about it, what we think about it. At the end of the day, brothers and sisters, this is what's coming. And sisters are seeing it now. I think some sisters out there are seeing, you know, the getting isn't as good and plenteous as it was before. Usually, if, even if I make mistakes or whatever, I can go down and get something. I can get me a nice house in a nice area, raise my children in certain areas. Folks, they, let me tell you. The government's now to come into people on Section 8 saying, you got to move and you're going to be where I tell you to be. That's where the government is coming. And now the government is saying, and hold up, they didn't do it until relationships became unattainable, until there was totally a, a total break in the relationship between a man and a woman when it comes to who would be ruling or leading the children. They had to wait, make, they had to make sure that there was a serious break between the black and white, the black man and the black woman before they came with this. Because then they wanted to make sure the women didn't have any options, especially with being under so much debt. Because if you have no options, being under debt, you must go where the government tell you to be. So they, they were patient in this. And now... They came to those same Section 8 people and say, listen, guess what? You was only getting about $2,000 a month for one of these sisters to live in, one of these Americans. Let me put it that way. For one of these Americans to live in your Section 8. Suppose I give you $9,000 a month to live in for your same Section 8. And it will go towards a family that's coming over the borders. Who do you think that particular homeowner is going to choose? They're going to be looking for reasons to get people out of those Section 8 contracts to replace it with this new money. Nine thousand a month. In the inner city for a place you were getting two thousand for. Who do you think they're going to choose? And that's what's going on right now. They're coming up with all these bogus excuses to why people got to move out of their Section 8s when really it's about dollar and cents. They're looking at all the money that's coming, that's federal money that come through migrants and realize that's where the money is right now if you are renting. The government is incentivizing nuclear family by allowing people who are used to nuclear family over into the inner cities to replace the tribes of Judah. We're here. And there's nothing anyone can do about it. Let me read this scripture and then I'm, I thank you. I thank my lawyer patronies for being patient with me. But sometimes this stuff, when I'm looking at what's going on prophetically, and I just can't just keep it just exclusive I have to let people know what time it is sometimes. So, of course, we're going to have the more personable Zooms and all that 
on Patreon for one hour, but I had to show this. And there's one other thing that I can't show here on this platform, but I'll do it on Patreon. One moment. Let me show you all this. And, you, you know, and I'm looking at this thing, right? There's this big thing going around with uh, the gymnast, the gymnast woman, Simone Biles, I think her name, where her man comes out who, who, who plays for a football team and says, yeah, I'm the prize. And women everywhere in our community is up in arms. Saying, well, how can she, how can, that's how backward and broke our community is. Simone Biles is smiling ear to ear because she know this man is a prize. Okay, she know he's a prize. And people are mad because it's a, it's, it's a man who's willing to understand his worth. Man, I've never seen this. <laughs> you know, I've never seen this in the history of society. She's a gymnast. She's a, no, he's a man. They're not in competition with each other. She got something that, and she's married. She got something that most women would give a right arm for, and that's to have a nuclear family and a man to protect her in times such as this. She's smiling ear to ear. And when I seen this, I'm like, Are we that broken? When is it throughout history the man wasn't the prize? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Christ? <laughs> I'm like, what? Are we are we an idiocracy here? When in what society where there's more, you understand the law of averages. You understand supply and demand, right? When something is rare, it's worth more. If there's more women than there are men, then the get one is a prize. That's what make diamonds more precious than other jewels. They're rare in compared to the other stuff you can find. That's what make gold more worth than any other metal. Gold isn't the strongest metal, right? If you're going to build a structure, are you going to use steel or gold? Gold is soft, but it's worth more because it's rare. We need a mind shift within our communities. They broke us through Willie Lynch to have us believe up is down and, and, and left is right. And they made people believe they can only do this in our society, that women are worth more than men, which is utterly ridiculous. When men build the infrastructure, women relax on. Okay? And, this, I'm, and I'm just telling you, and guess what? That sister, Simone Biles, whatever her name is, I look at that sister, she's smiling ear to ear. Okay? She's smiling ear to ear because why? She understands the value of having someone to love and who loves her. It has nothing to do with her. She says, long after, long after I'm a gymnast, I'm going to be Mr. Whatever his name is. And that's the mind shift that must happen. Let me read Isaiah 3 real quick. I can't believe I'm, I'm looking at this and... I'm like, why are people so upset about this? When well, his brother says, yeah, she came, she came, she came the way I was. And the brother said, well, it seemed like you the prize. He's like, he, the brother said, of course, men are the prize. And I don't see no one saying this. I mean, if, Tom, if it was Tom Cruise, no one would have a problem. If it was any other race of people, the, their man can be the prize with no issue. That's how broken our society is. But you know what? The Most High is doing a paradigm shift where it doesn't matter if you understand the worth of the man. The Most High understands his worth. 
And it's a shame because women, men have always given women their due in our community. Of how, of, how, of how worthy they were to have a good woman. Men were never like this. But a paradigm shift is here. And I hope brothers and sisters can take heed to where we are. I'm like, hey, that sister, that sister understood what she wanted, and she went and got <laughs> what she wanted. And I'm like, you know what? Good for you, sister. Don't care about what these people are saying out here. Let me read it here. Right? Let me read Isaiah 3. It reads, Isaiah 3 and 1, For the Lord, for behold the Most High, the Lord of hosts, to take away from Jerusalem and from Judah, stay in the staff and the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. The mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient. The captain of 50 and the honorable man and its counselor and the cunning artificer and the eloquent orator. And I will give children to be their princes and babes shall rule over them. That's where we are right now. We're being ran with with by people who are operating like 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 petulant children. And the people shall be oppressed, everyone by another and everyone by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, disobedient children, and the base against the honorable. Okay? You're going to have people who are actually knee-deep in sin, debaucherous, online and others, judging nuclear traditional family. I need y'all to check out the end of those so-called reality shows like Love and Hip Hop and all these others. Where at the end, there's someone from the letter people giving levity to the confusion that should have been relationships between a heterosexual man and a heterosexual woman. Ch check out those optics. The calm, cool, logical reasonable one is the one sitting there with a cue card bringing up how chaotic your relationships are. And that's what the Bible says. And the base, that means those who wouldn't be looked towards at all in any righteous society as honorable. It says the base, which is the less or the low of society against the honorable. You can have people who dealing with alternative lifestyles judging heterosexual relationships. Check that out. When a man shall take hold of his brother of the house of his father, saying, Thou hast clothing, be thou our ruler, and let this ruin be under thine hand. So it, it lets you know that men understand what's going on. Men are going to say, man, I don't care about this pride of life stuff. If there's another brother who got something who can help me through this storm, I'll humble myself and work with that brother or work under that brother for the sake of survival. That's what's coming. Not no, well, I'm too proud to humble myself under another man, and yet you will die, in, die on the streets. The most I say men are going to be like, hey, I'll work in your house. Just make sure I get some beans, rice, you know, you know, let me get three meals and a cot. Some place to crash and I'll work in your home if you can help me through this. We're coming to that time, brothers and sisters. We're coming to that time. In that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be an healer. For in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of the people. So it doesn't matter what your occupations are. When this stuff break down, you're going to come 
in need of something. It doesn't matter what you're looked upon through in the world. It doesn't matter how many degrees you have when it all breaks down. When the hell breaks down, you're going to need food. You're going to need water and you're going to need protection. So your degrees, your education, none of that is going to do what? None of that is going to help you through this time. And I'm going to tell you this right now. You see what people see, what people <laughs> what's going on with people with degrees right now. Well, it, it isn't worth the paper it's written on. The, I'm going to tell you this. The migrants that are coming over who were once deemed illegal are making more just to become a citizen in the United States right now than those people who are in debt as American citizens with degrees. And guess what? They're making money just for existing right now, uneducated, didn't pay no taxes, didn't go to no school, and they come over the board and automatically they're worth more than someone with a high master's degree within the United States right now. Because your degree do not transfer into currency. That's why I say even your doctors in the scripture are going to say, listen, hey, if somebody get a cut, you know what I mean? I'll put a bandaid on it. I don't care about my degree. You got a pot of beans? Can you feed me? Because guess what? Doctors are going out of business soon. Okay. It's going to be a conversation straight to the pharmaceutical. Okay. They will have clinic people who can help get stuff to you directly to your home from a Zoom call. Doctors are going to be obsolete in the new world to come. I've already read the materials. So doctors aren't going to mean anything in the world to come. More so than using the skills they, they acquired to try to get a bowl of beans from someone who actually, that's right, who actually, actually prepared for the time that's coming. You can have an uneducated hillbilly on a, that's right, on a farm that will be worth more than a doctor or a lawyer. Book it right here. Because he'll have food. Okay? You have a straw in his mouth. He can't even put two sentences together and he's going to be running around every educated person, you know, okay, you build that. Hey, okay. You go over there. You, you go, I'm going to show you how to make a fire. You can have a woman talking about, look at my nails. Hey baby, snap those nails off, snap those nails off and milk that cow. He's going to become the man. Okay. He will be the man in that day. And guess what? I respect education if it's transferred into real life use that the most high can utilize in a person when it comes to an education. I love intelligence. I love books. I got books everywhere. So I'm not, guess what? I'm not talking down on education. But what good is it if you're not using it? And that's what the Bible, using it for what's good, for what's right. Martin Luther King was educated. He died utilizing that education because he used it for what was right. So don't guess what, folks? I will never speak down on education. OK, you have to know how to read, write, uh, comprehend. That's needed. But they turn they have turned uh, 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 education into activism. And that's when it becomes nonsense. Right. Let's go. Let me read this. In that day. Let's go straight to it. In that day, the seventh verse. Shall he swear, saying, I will not be an healer for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Man, I don't got nothing to eat. So next is healing stuff. Make me not a ruler of the people. So I don't care about my status. Okay, right now I don't have nothing to eat. So what good is it being a doctor if I'm going to die of starvation? For Jerusalem is ruined 
and Judah is fallen because their tongue and their doings are against the Most High. And that's why the Most High is allowing what you see going on with the, with the replacements. To provoke the eyes of his glory. The show of their continents doth witness against them. They declare their sin as Sodom. See? They got our people who brought in to Sodom and Gomorrah. Look at what was look at the allegations and others that are going down with, with the pastors like T D Jakes. Okay? Like what happened with Eddie Long, Eddie Long's fall from grace. The connection to the Sodom activity. This is why the Most High is allowing Esau to bring in other people to replace, replace our people who have lost traditional values and respect for God and family. They hide it not. They don't even hide it anymore. The Most High says our people don't even hide our shame anymore. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Say ye to the righteous that it shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruits of their doings. Woe to the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hand shall be given him. And for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. Women rule over them. Oh, my people. They which lead thee cause thee to err. And that's why they put in women in all these authoritative positions in our community. So that they can talk down on us, but shut up and do what they're told behind closed doors. When it comes to what? You got it. City council and others, the president and others, they shut up when they're in front of them, but they'll come to us and give us their behind and, and talk down on us. And destroy the way of thy paths. The Lord standeth up to plead and standeth to judge the people. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people and the princes thereof, for ye have eaten up the vineyard, the spoil, the spoil of the poor in your houses. What mean ye that ye beat my people to pieces and grind the faces of the poor, saith the Lord God of hosts? Moreover, the Lord saith, because the daughters of Zion are hardy and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. It's talking about what? Walking around, the body, all that other stuff, with standards while the nation suffers. And that's why, that's right, folks. That's why in the book of Isaiah, it talks about this. It talks about the Most High telling our people in the communities, the children of Israel, enough is enough. If you won't humbly change yourself, I'll bring the change to your door. And that's what we're witnessing right now. That's what we're witnessing in the migrant crisis. And the more stubborn our people become, the greater the judgment. Project 2025. Project 2025 is already here. They're changing all the rules to receive anything from government. It's coming. And guess what? It's not just a conservative plan. They had to break our society first under the Democrats. See, you break it under the Democrats and bring the, res the resolve against the same people you are against through the Republicans. That's how it works. And hey, Patriotes, I'm going to come on for an hour and we're going to talk about this 
and I have the statistics and the statistics bear out. The majority of people that are coming over here, they're women, they're women, outnumber the men. So you have to think about what that's going to do for those who are seeking relationships in our community. They've already made relationships unattainable between the black man and the black woman. So when these people come over, it's going to shift everything. And guess what? The Bible tell you that there's going to be a lack of men because you know why? When it comes to breakdowns of relationships, when women realize that no one is coming to help them, folks, there's going to be scenarios where men are going to be getting killed, brothers in number, for trying to get out of relationships. If they seek to get out of a relationship, understanding that, guess what? There's <laughs> Because men are going to be like gold at that point. You try to get out of a relationship, a woman would rather you take a dirt nap than to choose because you, you, you will become her survival ticket. That's in the book of Isaiah, folks, a lack of men. Well, you think it's just a war that's going to be killing the men? No. No. <laughs> hey, it's, it's about to be what happened in Chirac or Chicago and other areas. It's going to be unattainable. I'm going to tell you, they're going to be taking men out in all of that. This is why I'm talking to my sons and say, here, it's going to be a scenario where you have to now go through me. Because I'm not trying to bury my boy due to a bad choice of a relationship. Okay? These women, are they, it's going to be blood sport. It, this thing is going to put passport bros to bed. They're like, no, y'all don't get your passports. I'm going to inundate your inner cities with all of these women with no men who already have learned coming up on how to agree with the man. And it's going to look good on the surface. But then, brothers, you got to deal with what pagan belief she's, she's coming with. Whether or not she's in a Santa Maria. <laughs> Whether or not she deal in craft. So even though, they, even though they're feminine and, and respect the patriarchy and look good with hair and all that, are they coming with a craft? So the Bible tells us, in that day, a man shall be like pure gold. And it's not speaking about any man. So if you know your worth as a man, you must choose wisely. Abraham chose Sarah. He was rich. He could have had any woman he wanted. But he understood the value of a help meet like unto himself. So if you feel that you're one of those prized men that the Most High have chosen to do a great work in this earth and understand your worth, then you must understand not to devalue that worth by who you choose. Right? Someone says, imagine if Elder Rikashi y'all joined IUIC, it would be wild. No, thank you. Okay. I, I'm joined with Christ. Okay. But I understand what you're saying. Now, if there was a scenario where they accepted the tenets of Christ, baptism, the laying on of hands, the judgment, and all the tenets that was left to Peter, then we can talk about what? A level of an alliance as brethren, as brethren to protect and, and to look out for one another, regardless of anything, because we're on one accord when it comes to doctrine. So, no thank you. Okay? No thank you. The doctrine must align with Christ. All right? With that, we're going to go on for one hour, one hour 
on Patreon. I'll see you over, my loyal Patreonies. Let's talk. Shalom. And again, April, I mean, I keep on saying April, January 7th, begin a new Hebrew and Bible Academy. Man, we're going in. We're going in some brand new lessons, and I would like for you to be a part of this. We have news. You don't want to miss the news because there's a lot coming down the pipeline between now and spring. So make sure you're there. The news, brand new Hebrew 101, things that have never been taught when it comes to the original language. And yes, we have the roundtable discussions and more. 12 weeks with a new platform that none of you want to miss. Okay. The more you support, the better this becomes. All right. With that, I'll see you over on Patreon. May the most high be with you. Stay prayed out. Stay prayed up. Stay prayed up and sin not. And keep in mind, the most high is calling back the children of Israel. Shabbat Shalom.